Queen Elizabeth was born on September 7, 1533, in Greenwich, England. She claimed her throne at age 25 and held it for 44 years, keeping England in the ascendant through wars and political and religious turmoil. Elizabeth grew up in complex and sometimes difficult circumstances. The daughter of King Henry VIII and his second wife, Anne Bolin, she was only two years old when she lost her mother. Anne was beheaded on the orders of her husband based on possibly false charges of adultery and incest. Before long, Elizabeth and her older sister Mary were declared to be illegitimate as her father sought to pave the way for a male heir. Instead, her half-brother Edward, born on 1537 by Henry's third wife, Jane Seymour, the two sisters were later reinstated as potential heirs. As a child, Elizabeth was given a very impressive education. It became popular amongst the nobility to educate daughters as well as sons. Elizabeth excelled in her studies. She was taught by famous scholars such as William Grindel and Roger Eskam, and from an early age it was clear that she was remarkably gifted. She had a special flair for languages, and by adulthood she could repeatedly speak five languages fluently. During this time, Elizabeth was under the care of her stepmother, Catherine Parr. Tensions with Parr over Parr's new husband, Thomas Seymour, led Elizabeth to return at the royal estate at Hatfield, away from the court. Her relationship with Seymour later came under scrutiny, and Seymour was later tried for conspiring to wed Elizabeth in a bid to gain power. Found guilty, Seymour was executed. Elizabeth once again found herself embroiled in political troubles after Edward's death in 1553. Her older half-sister Mary and their cousin Lady Jane Grey both sought the crown. Edward had appointed Grey to be his successor, but her reign proved to be short-lived. Mary gained the support of the English people and unseated Grey after only nine days on the throne. Mary, being a devout Roman Catholic, she sought to restore her country back to her faith, undoing her father's break from the Pope. While Elizabeth went along with the religious changes, she remained a candidate for the throne for those who wanted to return to a Protestant England. Thomas Wyatt organized a rebellion against Mary in 1554 with the hopes of making Protestant-raised Elizabeth queen. But his plot was uncovered and Elizabeth was quickly imprisoned by Mary. Elizabeth disputed any involvement in the conspiracy, but her sister was not convinced. Elizabeth's life was firmly in her sister's hands Wyatt was executed, but he maintained that Elizabeth was not aware of the rebellion. Elizabeth eventually returned to Hatfield and continued with her studies. In 1558, Elizabeth took the reins of her country after the death of her sister. She inherited a number of problems stirred up by Mary. The country was at war with France, which proved to be a tremendous drain on the royals. There was also great tension between different religious factions after Mary worked to restore England to the Roman Catholicism by any means necessary. In fact, she earned the nickname Bloody Mary for ordering the execution of 300 Protestants. Elizabeth acted swiftly to address these two oppressing issues. During the first session of Parliament in 1559, she called for the passage of the Act of Supremacy, which re-established the Church of England, and the Act of Uniformity, which created a common prayer book. Elizabeth took a modern approach to the religious conflicts in her country between the Protestants and the Catholics. There is one Jesus Christ, she once said, the rest is a dispute over trifles. With the assistance of her key advisor, William Cecil, Elizabeth ended the war with France. She was able to avoid clashing with two other superpowers of the age, France and Spain, for much of her reign. In 1585, Elizabeth entered the fray to support Protestant rebellion against Spain in the Netherlands. Spain then set its sight on England, but the English Navy was able to defeat the infamous Spanish Armada in 1588. According to several reports, the weather proved to be the deciding factor in England's victory. 
Elizabeth also had to fend off internal efforts to remove her from her throne. One of the greatest threats came from Mary Stuart, Queen of Scots. She united the country with France in 1558 when she married the future King Francis II. After Francis's death, Mary returned to Scotland in 1561. She was raised Catholic and was considered by many English Catholics to be the rightful monarch of England. Elizabeth and Mary were cousins and Mary had previously laid the claim to the English crown. Elizabeth jailed her cousin in 1567 in connection with several assassination attempts, including the Babington plot. Elizabeth kept Mary in prison for nearly 20 years before she finally agreed to have her cousin executed in 1587. The following photos are pictures of the execution of Mary Queen of Scots. Elizabeth showed her talents as a diplomat, managing a number of suitors and potential royal matches during her reign. Through her father and sister, Elizabeth had seen the troubles and challenges of royal marriages. Mary had made an unpopular choice marrying Philip II of Spain, who shared in her devotion to the Roman Catholic faith. In the hopes of reuniting their two countries once more, Philip had offered to wed Elizabeth one more time. This is a photo of Philip II of Spain. Other suitors for Elizabeth's hand included the King of Sweden, Charles of Austria, and the future King of France, Henry III. She used her availability as means to political ends, but she never agreed to marriage. She herself seemed to have an interest in a member of her court, Robert Dooley, and their relationship was a subject of much gossip and speculation. Both parties came under suspicion after the mysterious death of Dooley's wife. Elizabeth seemed to have no interest in sharing power with a spouse. Over time, she cultivated her image as a queen married to her job and her people. For this dedication, Elizabeth earned the nickname, the Virgin Queen. Queen Elizabeth drew her final breath on March 24, 1603 at Richmond Palace. With her death came the end of the House of Tudor, a royal family that had ruled England since the late 1400s. The son of the former rival, Mary Stuart, succeeded her on the throne as James I. Queen Elizabeth I claimed to have a heart and soul of a king, but it was her sharp and cunning mind that secured her livelihood, guided her judgments, ruled her actions, and led to one of the most celebrated eras in English history. Her reign resulted in a lengthy time of peace and prosperity. Her intelligence and flair permitted every strata of society so that fashion, the arts, music, and literature were able to take a huge leap forward. She encouraged trade and exploration through English voyages of discoveries led by brave men like Walter Raleigh and Humphrey Gilbert. She established religious freedoms and set the standards for women's independence and gave them credibility in political arenas in positions of power and responsibility. She gathered about her some of the most educated and clever men who served as her advisors, colleagues, friends, and sometimes perhaps even lovers. She gave women an independent voice in the field of politics and commerce that we enjoy still to this day. While the end of her reign had been difficult, Elizabeth has largely been remembered as a queen who supported her people. Her lengthy time on the throne provided her subjects with stability and consistency. Her sharp wits and clever mind helped navigate the nation through religious and political challenges, sometimes referred to as the Golden Age.